What's up, guys? It's the Deck Talking Devil here with you, as promised, to discuss Islam. What I want to do in this first video in a series of videos to come is kind of give an overview of the Prophet Muhammad and uh, <clears throat> talk about how this religion that's called Islam today got started. Finishing up a cigar. Happy Dumb Winkles cigar. Uh, Family Reserve. Pretty nice cigar. Uh, the book that I wanted to kind of highlight today and you guys know I've given you several books dealing with this subject already if you don't follow me on Instagram already be sure to go over to Instagram uh, and follow the deck talking devil on Instagram uh, deck talking devil on Instagram go through my my page and you'll be able to see several lot of books that I'll be using uh, while I'm doing this series on Islam. Uh, it's a, it's quite a few of them. Uh, Patricia Cohn uh, gives us one dealing with the caliphates. Uh, then I got another one dealing with the first uh, dynasties, uh, caliphate dynasties, uh, In the Shadow of the Sword by Tom Holland, The Hidden Origins of Islam. The Historical Origins of Islam by Walter Williams. Go over there on my Instagram page and you'll see the books, several other books uh, that I'll use dealing with this subject. So, the book I want to highlight today, this one, In the Shadow of the Sword by Tom Holland. Tom Holland, is it? It's a pretty good book. Uh, Tom Holland writes in a way uh, that's captivating. You know, it, it really captures the attention. And if you're not one uh, that's a student reading uh, scholastic or academic works, then I highly recommend Tom Holland. His his book kind of reads more like a novel than a uh, tedious academic work but the scholarship is there uh it's some really good scholarship and in my opinion one of the best books on islam to set the stage and kind of put in context the religion of islam so who was this prophet muhammad uh he lived supposedly in 570 a.d to 632 uh the eight well he he grew up uh, his father died shortly after his birth and so he was raised by his grandfather and his uncle uh they raised him he was a merchant uh you know he was part of a camel cavalry of sorts and uh eventually he got the name al amin which means uh, trustworthy or faithful. So he was known as being a trustworthy character or faithful character. And uh, eventually he got into being a merchant and he became a merchant, was a merchant for about 20 years. After that, he, he goes uh, at the age of 40, uh, I think we're up to about, the year 16 now uh he goes and goes into this cave in Hira, uh and he has this revelation where uh this being appears to him and tells him ikra ikra means recite all right recite and muhammad says hey i can't recite i'm illiterate basically uh and the angel kind of tussles with him, and then he commands him to recite again, 
and Muhammad says again, hey, I'm illiterate. I can't recite. Uh, and eventually Muhammad begins to recite the lines, uh, part of the lines that will be, be uh, inscribed in what we call the Quran. All right. He leaves the cave and he runs home and he's in a lot of agony behind what he's seen. All right. Behind this experience of revelation. And he confides in his wife, uh, Khadija, and he tells her what happens. And Muhammad believes that he was possessed by jinn. Now, jinn is like a wandering spirit in the desert. It's not necessarily a demon, uh, but it can be perceived to be a wanton spirit uh, in the desert that agitated, irritated, and harassed people in the desert. So he believes that he's been possessed by this spirit, by this jinn. And that's what he encountered in the cave. It's his wife who convinces him, no, this was not a demon. This was not a jinn. It was, in fact, the angel Gabriel or Jibril. Uh, it's Jibril in Arabic. All right. And to validate that, she takes him to her cousin and has Muhammad repeat the story to her cousin. And her cousin also says, yeah, this, this was not a demon. This was the angel, Jibril, and I wish that I was there with you when the people turn against you. And Muhammad goes, what do you mean, turn against me? And he, the, his, uh, Muhammad's wife's cousin tells him, you know, anytime anybody comes with a message like this uh, that's so great, the people always turn against them. And I wish I would be there with you on the day when your message came forth and the people turned against you because I'd stand with you. And I'd support you. I'd defend you. Uh, a few days later, whatever, this guy dies. So Muhammad initially believed he was possessed by a spirit, a jinn. He did not have the understanding that this was an angel, a messenger from God initially. He was convinced that it was that by his wife and his wife's cousin. Okay. That in itself, to me, is suspicious. Because normally, it, let's say in the Bible, when we see the angel Gabriel coming to give someone a message, he always says who he is. He announces it. You know, it, it, be not afraid. Fear not. For I am the angel of the Lord, the messenger of God or whatever. And I came to give you this message from God. You know, this is how he appears in the Bible, but this is not the case with Muhammad. Muhammad wholeheartedly believes that he's been harassed. He's been possessed by a spirit. And it takes his wife and his wife's cousin to convince him otherwise. So Muhammad goes on and now he's convinced. He's been convinced by these two individuals that he's actually had an encounter with the messenger of God, Jibril, Gabriel. Uh, he, he goes and he's so vexed that he tries to commit suicide. When he gets ready to jump off the cliff, this voice, Jibril, who he now is convinced is Jibril, appears again and tells him, Ikra, recite you know, and starts to get him more of the revelation that will be, be uh, become the Quran. And he writes this. Well, he, he don't write it down. He just recites it. All right. And this happened a couple of times, a few times over the span of years. Muhammad is given the revelation over several years. He's given the revelation. Now, note that he's not writing this down. Because Muhammad is illiterate. He's supposedly memorizing this stuff. All right. Over years. And he can recite it from memory because he's not able to write. That 
poses problems as well because now we have to depend on the recollection, the memory of a man to accurately uh, recite what it is the angel of God has told him over years of time. Anyway, uh, Muhammad's wife, Khadija and Abu Bakr, uh, becomes the first, Abu Bakr supposedly is the first one who converted to Islam, uh, the first man to convert to Islam. Uh, so Abu Bakr and Muhammad's wife are said to be the first two converts or initiates into Islam. All right. Uh, they start to believe that Muhammad's been given this revelation from God. And Muhammad starts to tell other people the message that he's received from God, not necessarily how it was received. Uh, that would actually come several years later where he started to convey to people how he received a message. But he goes about preaching this message now that Allah is the only God and he has no partners. And this flies in the face because Muhammad was a part of a tribe called the Quraysh. Now the Quraysh, we're dealing with a people uh, sort of in the area of Persia. Uh, if you want to call it that, well, over in that area, that neck of the woods by Iran. Uh, Iran and Iraq are going to play some pivotal roles in this story, as will uh, become clear. But the Quraysh, the, the tribe that Muhammad was born into, the tribe that he was raised in, that his parents were a part of, this tribe was in charge to keeping the Kaaba. Now, the Kaaba was not what it is today it was not this shrine of Allah it was in fact a, a temple basically for all of the gods of Persia the people in this area all had different gods they were said to be polytheists and they all had different gods and so you can walk into the shrine and see all sorts of gods being worshipped in this shrine so this was a pagan temple of worship, pagan, and I don't uh, affirm that that particular title, pagan. I put no stock in it. Uh, pagan simply today is any religion that's not a part of the accepted uh, monotheistic religions. All right. So it's the religions that preceded them. So all, all of these monotheistic Judaism, Christianity, and Islam uh, came on the scene and they denounced all of the other religions that preceded them as being pagan and idolatry, uh, which I don't accept. Uh, I believe that those religions that preceded were closer to truth than the ones that came later. So anyway. They believe in Arabic tradition or Islamic tradition. They say that the Kaaba was built by Abraham uh, and his son Ishmael. Uh, no, it wasn't, but whatever. It, it, here's the problem with that. To say that the Kaaba was built by Abraham and Ishmael, now you have to explain how it was used or why it was used as a temple of pagan worship. If it was built by Abraham and Ishmael, why was it uh, constructed as a place of pagan worship? Was Abraham and Ishmael worshiping pagan gods? Were they polytheists? So if you take it as it's presented in Islamic tradition, you'd have to accept the fact, or at least in my opinion, you'd have to concede that Abraham and Ishmael likewise worshiped or at least condoned the worship of pagan gods. Anyway, the, the Kabul would later be uh, Muhammad's presenting this message of the one God now, and it flies in the face of uh, his own tribe, the Quraysh, and it incites the people because now they're seeing, at first, they were just mocking Muhammad. 
All right, that's just mocking him, discount him as any other prophet that's come along, like the hundreds of thousands of prophets before him who claim they got a message. Because the jinns would possess people all the time. These spirits of the desert possess people all the time, and they they would start to prophesy uh, these these holy scripts uh, uh, or holy writs of certain gods and all of this. This happened all the time. And so they just chucked Muhammad off as another one of these people possessed by a jinn. Nothing special. All right. Until Muhammad started preaching that Allah is one and besides him, there's no partners. Until he started condemning polytheists and the worship that was going on in the Kaaba. Now he started to incite the people because they saw him as a threat a threat to the way of life in which he himself had been reared. And so they figured, okay, he, he's a problem. He got to go. So Muhammad gets a dream in the middle of the night that the Quraysh was planning on killing him in his sleep. And so he gets up in the middle of the night and he runs away to Mecca or Medina. Uh, and he's there as a refugee, basically, one seeking refuge and while he's there, he starts to preach this message, present this message that he was given. He gets a number of followers and everything. They eventually go and take the Kaaba uh, and claim it for Allah. They cleansed it and purged it and devoted it to the worship of Allah only. Uh, and then you get the Arab conquest that came behind Muhammad between 624, 628. <clears throat> during that time he's going about and he's conquering other nations and all of this in the name of Allah. Muhammad eventually uh, dies in 632. 632 now. Some people say Muhammad had been poisoned for killing the family member Zabang, uh uh, whatever the guy's name, uh, and they say the guy uh, poisoned him because Muhammad killed one of his family members. Uh, other stories say Muhammad just got ill, and he went back to his house or whatever, and he was ill for several days, and eventually he died. However, we had a death of Muhammad being in 632 AD. This is the prophet that starts this religion of Islam. This is the story, not my word. This is the story according to Islamic historians, Islamic scholars, and the tradition of Islam. Uh, granted, you will find different uh, renditions of this story depending on the historian who's telling it. Uh, the facts of the life uh, and death of Muhammad changes from historian to historian. You know, it's all over the place. Uh, one writer would say that, you know, the origins of Islam or the history of Islam was basically birth in the light, in the full light of history, only to have another historian come behind and say, you know, the history of Islam is not as clear cut as we thought it was. In fact, the history of Islam was birthed in a veil of absolute darkness because we know literally nothing about this guy we know nothing about islam uh except for what we were told centuries later after he died and so after muhammad died you get the caliphate come on the scene the caliphate uh depending on whose translation you use caliphs uh, were believed to be successors of Muhammad. So the successors are the prophets. That's one definition of the term caliph. But then another definition, uh, which some attributes only to the Umayyads, is the deputies of God, the deputies of Allah. So some would say the caliphs are successors of Muhammad. Some would say they're deputies of God. However, you get these four caliphs uh, or the caliphate after Muhammad. And you get uh, Abu Bakr, you get Umar, you get Uthman, and then you get Ali. All right. We'll deal more with that. But it's said that the third guy, Uthman, 
is the one who actually put together the Hadith uh, and the Quran as we know it. He, he went on this great mission to put together all of the teachings of Muhammad and everything and gave us the Quran as we know it. A lot of problems with the Caliphate, a lot of problems with the Isnads, uh, which are commentaries, the Tafsirs, uh, and we'll get into all of that. What I need you to do, though, is some research, some preliminary research first. Go and read the books. Uh, I know you may not be able to get all of them, and you may not be able to read them in time, but start your research. Okay, I gave several books. Go to my my Instagram channel and look at those books. Uh, you'll see them. I've been posting them for the last week, maybe two weeks. Because I've been revisiting this uh, study of Islam so that I can do these uh, videos talking about the history of Islam. It's not as clean and cut as you think. A lot of the stuff that, that's thought to be known about Muhammad is not known. All right, uh, what, what we know about Muhammad and the, the origins of Islam came hundreds of years after Muhammad. Uh, at least 200 years after Muhammad had already died, from the caliphs that lived after him, and uh, the society of scholars that came uh, after the prophet had died. So it, it's a lot of stuff that we got to cover. Was the Quran actually written in Syriac? Was the Muslims and was Islam initially just a uh, Arabic group of Christians? Uh, was the Prophet Muhammad or was the title Muhammad just the title and not actually someone's name? All right. All of this stuff we'll get into, but I need you guys to start the research. Go to my Instagram, Deck Talking Devil, subscribe, look at the books that's there. Get as many of those books as you can get your hands on and start your research. And we'll dig more into this topic in the weeks to come. Until next time, this has been the Deck Talking Devil. Keep learning, my friend.